Have you ever felt like your home lab network is just too slow? Well, I did, and that's why I'm upgrading to 100 gigabit. Today, I'll show you my brand new Mikrotik switch and how I set up it to supercharge my server with high speed, highly available bonding. We'll go through my connections, the setup process, and some real world performance tests also to see if this upgrade is really worth it. Stay tuned. Before this upgrade, all my servers were connected via 2.5 gigabit ports to a TP-Link Omada switch, and it worked quite okay, but I wanted something more. I wanted something more in the terms of latency and also something more in terms of bandwidth. So now it's time for upgrade, and that's where Mikrotik CRS504 4QX IN comes in. With its four 100 gigabit QSFP28 ports, I can connect all my servers at lightning speed and significantly reduce latency. Well, there is one caveat though, because I am not using 100 gigabit, I am using 25 gigabit subports out of the Quad SFP28. So I am using a very interesting a splitter cable that gives me four 25 gig ports out of one 100 gigabit port. So let's dive into the setup. On this diagram, uh, there is a visual representation of my home lab. I have the switch right there and four Minis Forums MSO1s. Very basic setup, nothing too fancy. So I will show you how I connected everything because what's interesting here is I am using bonding to have high availability of the networking. So in case of I want to do some maintenance or there is something broken on the network, I can very simply pull out one of the ports, let's say the first one, and it will disconnect all four MSO1s, but only on one port, so the others still will work properly and I will still have my networking available to me. So, let's take a look. There is a first connection of the first QSFP port, and there is second connection of the second port. And the same goes to the other ones. And let's call this port A. So port A of the switch is connected to port A's of all the Minis Forums ports. So we will also have port B in this case, and port B is connected very similarly to all the Minis Forums. Also, in terms of access to the internet or generally external network, what I have is a fourth subport connected to the Omada switch, and also the management port is connected to the same Omada switch. This is very weird configuration, but with the help of STP, a spanning free protocol, it just switches over from 10 gigabit network right there into the one gigabit management port if I need to do some maintenance. That's because my Omada switch doesn't have two SFP ports, it just have one available at least. Uh, because I am using the other one for something else. So I still can have highly available configuration somehow. But this will change very soon. So stay tuned and subscribe when I will be switching my router network card from uh, one 10 gigabit into two SFP28 port card. So in that case, the configuration will be slightly different because then I will just connect two of some of the ports into the Mellanox ConnectX4 card. So that will be also interesting. Okay, so with all that in mind, let's go into Mikrotik configuration and see how that really works, because there are a few things you have to configure for this in order to work properly. So let's open Winbox, let's connect. And what we need to do is in the interfaces list right there, you have to configure your bonding, which obviously I already have. I configured four bondings for my four minis forums with the use of two QSFP ports, with each one split it into four sub ports. So let's take a look at the bonding. But what is this bonding actually? So bonding is a virtual network interface that consists of multiple physical network ports. So in case of the one port failing, it can fail over to the other port if you set up that way or you can just pass traffic through all the ports at the same time. So this gives you higher bandwidth in total. This doesn't necessarily mean that you can utilize full bandwidth of all aggregated ports when you want to copy one file. That's because the one connection can only go through one port. So you're still limited into the bandwidth of one single port. In my case, it will be 10 gigabit because Minis Forums interfaces are just 10 gigabit, but you can still aggregate 
two of those ports into 20 gigabit and pass in total over multiple connections 20 gigabit. So keep that in mind. Okay, so since this is a bonding and it aggregates multiple ports, you have to specify the ports. There are the slaves in the configuration, which as you can see, there is QSFP 28.1-1. So the first one is first port of the QSFP port on the MicroTIC. And the second one in this case is a sub port, one of the four available to me. And the other slave right there, second port and first sub port of that. And if we look into another bond, it will be very similar. I'm again using first port of the MicroTIC and third sub port for the third bonding. And port two and third sub port on the second port on the MicroTIC. Okay. Another thing you have to configure in terms of bonding is a mode. 802.3 AD is the same as LACP, which stands for Link Aggregation Control Protocol, that allows talk between switch and your computer network card to see if the ports are available to it or not, if they are responding. So it is important that you have to configure all those settings on both sides. If you don't do this, LACP simply will not work and will shut down the port because it won't be able to communicate with the other side. Uh, and other modes are strictly Linux features. Active backup, it's quite obvious. You just have one active port and another is just waiting for failover. So you don't have the benefit of aggregated bandwidth and different balance options. There is one caveat though, because I told you that you cannot sum the bandwidth of multiple ports. Actually, it's possible with balance round robin in Linux. Unfortunately, not all switches play nice with this setting, so you must check your configuration. My MSO1s actually didn't work well with this configuration. I had a lot of packet drops and other weird issues, but my QNAPNAS works perfectly great for some weird reason, so keep that in mind. Another thing you have to set up is link monitoring. MII is the only one that you can use in LACP configuration. Then you have the transmit hash policy. Those two options, layer two and layer two plus three, are the LACP valid configurations. The layer three plus four is not technically LACP compliant, but many devices may support this. It's available in Linux. It's available in Mikrotik since, well, it's based in Linux actually, and some switches might support this and if they do i really suggest you to use this configuration if you are using multiple connections from one computer to another computer the same one i mean what happens is that it will take the port number into consideration now so it will actually allow you to spread the traffic across multiple ports in this scenario and pass that to another computer in a total 20 gigabit bandwidth another thing you have to also configure is lacp rate Usually it will be just one second. It's just health check that is sent from switch to the other side and from the other side to switch, by the way, also. It's two-way verification. And most of the time you just won't have it to be set as one second or otherwise called fast. So you can ask me now, why the hell did I bought 100 gig switch with just four ports? Does it really make any sense? In terms of price, it actually makes a really big sense because it is very cheap option to have 16 25 gig ports. But also the other thing that we have available here is MLAG. At the very bottom, you can see the MLAG ID configuration, which we will not be using today. But what I have available to me is I can buy another same switch. I will have not only highly available connections to the computers, but also each computer will be connected to both switches at the same time. And then if one switch breaks, or I just have to do some maintenance, the network will still work properly because the other one still has connection. It's just multi-chassis link aggregation group in that case. Okay, so let's take a look at the server configuration because in order for this setup to actually work, you also have to do the same setup on the server side. So let's look into my Debian network configuration. Pretty easy and pretty basic. There is no physical network interfaces configured at all. That's because I am just using the bond network interface. So as you can see already, the config is pretty basic and it just covers everything we just covered already with the on the switch side. So there are bond slaves, just the names of the network interfaces I have on my computers. MII monitoring, which is 100 default. Bonding mode, again, the same as on Mikrotik's site. I have to set this to LACP on both sides. Otherwise, again, 
this will not work. Bond LAT spread set to fast. The rate fast and slow are more common terms, but one second and 30 seconds is also okay. So why not? Hash policy layer three plus four. And other stuff is just basic network configuration. Again, the address, the gateway, the DNS setting, nothing more really. How can you actually check the status of your bonding? It's really pretty easy. All you have to do is just read a file from Protsnet bonding with the name of your bond, and then you can find out all information about your bonding. With the LACP, you can find a lot more information than in other modes because the LACP protocol actually exchanges more information about the ports themselves. So you can find out, obviously, we are using LACP. Well, just to make sure. Uh, again, layer three plus four. Monitoring is up, so this is general information of the bonding configuration itself. When you go lower in the file, you can see my slave interface and I can see the speed. So this is 10 gig network because the network card doesn't support more in the mini forums computers. But there is one thing I should mention also here because this didn't work out of the box, unfortunately. The 10 gigabit doesn't work here because I just connected the cable. I had to configure this on the MikroTik, unfortunately. So let's take a look. When we go into the QSFP interface itself, let's say 1-1, we have a few settings right there. On the SFP settings, you can find forward error correction mode. So in many tutorials and YouTube videos, you can find that you have to switch this option to something else when using breakout cables. Fortunately for me, I didn't have to change this, so auto is okay. But keep that in mind, you might need in some other configurations. But the other thing I have to disable also is auto negotiation. Unfortunately, auto negotiation didn't work at all for me. I had very weird issues with this configuration. So what I did instead is I set speed to 10G manually. So the problem with auto negotiation and this specific setup uh, with breakout cable and apparently Mikrotik uh, is that when the other port is down, it brings port on the switch down. But unfortunately, it's not the sub port. It's the whole 100 gig port. So all four sub ports are getting down in this scenario, which caused all ports to flap in my case. So I had network for like two seconds, didn't have network for one second, and it just was big mess. What I did is just disabled auto negotiation. I set speed to native 10G and everything works flawlessly since then. I guess if I were to enable auto negotiation again on all the sub ports, while all the sub ports are connected, this would work. But again, if I were to disconnect one mini forums, it will just bring down all other three ports in that case. So I don't want to really do that. Another thing you may need to set up in Mikrotech is your bridge configuration, because by default, your bridge interface will contain all the sub ports of the QSFP at 28 ports. So I had to remove all of them and instead put bonds into the bridge themselves. So the bridge is connected into the virtual bond interface that are aggregated to physical ports instead of the physical ports themselves. And here is also QSFP 28.4-4, which is my external word connection or uplink if you said so. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about some performance results. I won't be showing you that I can do 20 gig per second because that's kind of boring. It's 100 gigabit switch after all. So of course it can do 20 gigabit on both ports. Why not? But I will show you my Ceph performance benchmark. If you didn't saw a video about how to create Rook Ceph cluster on your Kubernetes, check that. The link will be somewhere there. This is the same result you can find on that video, but there is one more thing because I've added replicated to compressed 10G configuration. So we can see the difference between the old configuration and the new one. The previous one worked at 2.5 gig, also bonded by the way, so 5 gigabit in total, and new one is working on 2 times 10 gigabit, so 20 gig per total. And as you can see already, the latency lowered. IOPS is also quite higher, but obviously the biggest change is the bandwidth because previously I was just limited by the four gigabit per second connection, bonded in total, of course. Uh, now I'm limited into two gigabyte per second, right? Because 20 gigabit. So as you can see, I've hit some other limits already because it's just 1.7 gigabyte per second. So for my current setup, it's 
absolutely max. Probably I could do some tweaking also of the sap and stuff like that, but it's perfectly fine for my use cases. By the way, I've used replicated too, because this is already production. I don't want to reconfigure everything at once again to do those benchmarks. So I will just sticking to replicate it to compressed setup in future benchmarks if there were any to do. Thanks for watching. Hope you learned how to configure highly available bonding networking interfaces and stay tuned for more.